Welcome back, everybody. It's only been a short amount of time, but I'm so thankful that we are back and ready to roll with Confluence World Podcast, hosted by myself, Brian Rector. And today, we have another guy who has touched the field and, and touched the ice and the court and all these different capacities, but not through the lens of participating. This is a man who's been around in however many sports, however many venues Michigan State has to offer, and he's done it at the highest level. And he's found a way to grow in his craft. He's found a reason to continue to grow. And folks, this is somebody who I'm really excited to be sitting here interviewing because his path, true be told, is not like the rest of ours. And so without further ado, we're going into it on Confluence World Podcast with Derek Mitchell. Derek, thank you so much for coming by and making it so, so impactful to be here and to usher in this new kind of way of doing things with this show that involve people who are involved at a high level, but not through the traditional participant way. So thank you for being here. Absolutely. I'm so excited to be here. My main man, b I couldn't have Honestly, I couldn't have asked for a better person to interview me when it comes to something like this. We have conversations a lot yeah. about a bunch of topics that we're going to talk about today, but I'm excited to get on the mics and get on the camera and actually discuss it. So I'm excited. Yeah, it's one of these things, folks, is like when you start a podcast and you begin to share some of the backstory, you miss out on some of the things. And I think here with our guest today, Mr. D. Mitch, <laughs> Derek Mitchell. It's going to be great because we'll be able to dive deeper into a lot of things that we do or say that happen publicly, like some of the content that we push out, some of the, the calls that we've done together. We'll go into that further. So here's where I want you to start, Derek. I want you to start at the point of you are growing up in Metro Detroit, and what is your experience like with your family at home, and what is your faith journey? But first, Let's go into what was it like for you as you were getting here to Michigan State? What are some of the things you've gone through and how have you gotten here? So my first dream college was at Michigan State. At first it was U of M. My sister went to Michigan. She graduated from there. I went to the campus when she was a student there and I was like, wow, I want to go here. This is one of my favorite places. I still love it to this day, but my paths have changed, obviously, at being at Michigan State and being a student. But I went to UM Dearborn to chase that dream because I didn't get into Michigan the first time. My grades weren't good enough. I don't really know how to describe it, but I wasn't good enough and I was kind of beating on myself about that. But I wanted to keep doing it. My dad told me, you have one year. If you want to go to, you have to go to like a Big Ten school, a really big Big Ten school, and you have one year to do it. So if you have a year, go figure it out. And if you don't do it, you'll be at Michigan State or something like that. So he was telling me, go to the best school that you possibly can get into. And if you don't do that, you have a year. A little trial run but you have to transfer you cannot stay there and i was like okay so i went to u of m dearborn first semester i got a 4.0 and i worked as hard as i possibly could to get that grade and then i actually got into contact with a little bit of a with a person at michigan state who was just a recruiting person for students and she was talking to me about how i could come up to michigan state a semester early spring semester and actually get my foot down running get, get down running a little bit and just kind of figure it out so i talked to her i applied i got admitted and I went to Michigan State and it was a beautiful time. So I had a good time at Michigan State, but I transferred here and it was probably the best decision I could ever make. Dude, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. I know there are many people who are in a situation that I won't even say is like quite like yours, but they start somewhere that they may not want to be, right? Mm -hmm. That's not their end goal. So I was curious for you is like, when you heard that, when you heard your father, somebody who you look up to and somebody who's played a you know, pivotal role in your life, what did that mean for you? What, what were you thinking at that time where it was like, I need to execute right now and I need to change my ways and I need to be somebody different to it was, elevate? It was kind of like a grow up call for me because me and my dad always had this kind of playful relationship it wasn't really serious a lot of the times. My mom had those conversations with me a lot. But when my dad said that to me, I knew it was super serious. I could tell in his voice, he was like, you have to do this. And I'm not spending my money on college if you're going to not be where I want you to be. Mm -hmm. So you have to work hard. So it was kind of a slap in the face. And from that point on, I just kind of 
put my nose to the grind. I didn't do much of anything else besides studying. I just worked. I worked as hard as I possibly can. And I'm not the best student. I'm still not the best student now. My, my grades are good, but I always try to work as hard as I can to get those grades and balancing everything. So I just kind of put my nose to the grind for a semester. I didn't do anything else. I really didn't have a lot of conversations with friends. I was, a commu I was commuting to school, so I didn't really know a lot of people. And I was only there for a semester, so I just kind of just went to school, came back home, did homework, and repeated it. So I just did as much work as I can, and I did it, but I had to put my nose to the grind and just kind of like isolate myself a little bit so I can work hard and get to the work, get to where I am now. Certainly, certainly. And I think, you know, the one thing when I first heard this story that was taught or, or told to me a few months ago was like, man, sure, maybe it's true that you weren't the most, like not the best student or like not the most excellent in these buckets of your life that are different facets and, you know, things that you aspire to, but that play a, a part in where you're going. But the thing I've always known to be true about you, and it's been shown time and time again here, is that you have passion, you have tremendous passion and drive. So I was wondering if you could talk about where that comes from and your motivation. What are you motivated by? Why do you work every day? So I'm motivated by a lot of things, but I'd say probably my family's number one. I love my family so much. They they put poured a lot into me financially, spiritually, with everything that they've done. So I just want to kind of pay them back for what they've done to me. And that's kind of why I get up every morning, why I try to work out as much as I can, why I try to practice calls in my room just to get better at broadcasting, why I just try to do all of these things and put them together so I can really pay it back to my family for they're still paying back paying me now it's like i talking to my mom this morning and she's just like i had a call on impact yesterday with the um or it was a remote call with jack stager that's my guy he knows him too he's a fantastic person but i had a remote call and i tried to play by play for the first time and i wasn't as good as i thought i was at it and my mom i texted my mom at like one o'clock in the morning and i said mom i did this thing i didn't do it right i didn't do it as good as i wanted to i was kind of beating myself up about it i was laying in bed looking at the ceiling like okay i need to do better but she was just like, you need to relax and just practice as much as you can. Do what you need to do and just work. And it was kind of, my mom's been telling me this for years. So she needs to sit down, put your nose back to the grind, don't get comfortable and just work. So that's what I've been doing. And that's what I'm going to continue to do is continue to work. So that's kind of why I do what I do and I get up every morning because I'm just motivated to repay back my family mm. for putting me in this position that they put me in now. Mm. Mm. That is so good. I think there are so many things that can be taken away from what you just said about what it truly means because when you're from a family situation that's supportive and that allows you to do what you do i've thought about this myself as well it's like it's not a debt man it's not something that you owe back mm -hmm. however however it is important that you find a way to glorify them and what they've done for you absolutely and as well i think it's important like to recognize who's at the center of all blessing mm -hmm. and all gift giving, which is our Lord Absolutely. and Savior. Absolutely. So, so I was hoping that you could speak a little bit on the position and the role that faith has in your life as pertaining to the gifts you've been given and the way that you've been able to commit for his purpose. I actually was going to talk about faith next, like it kind of yeah. ties in with the family for me. Yes. Let's so go. I was just going to head there. Yeah, but absolutely. Absolutely. Faith, Man, it's been starting as a kid as well. Like my mother was telling, it's always with my mom, but she always, she started me off in my faith journey. I was really young. Sorry, I'm touching the table. But oh no, you're good. You're good. I was really young and she just kind of told me that you have to just believe in what you want to do and you have to chase that. And that's kind of how faith got introduced to me when I became a Christian when I was in sixth grade. Um, I'm going to go back to when I became a Christian. I was in sixth grade, I was in church and I just kind of felt something. I didn't know what it was. I couldn't describe it. It was just like a feeling. It was like, I don't know people who like kind of ASMR is a kind of thing like that. And it's kind of, you get this feeling. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the feeling that I got. It just kind of soothed my entire body and just took over my body. And from that point on, I knew it was Jesus. I was in church singing and then something just took over my body. And I was like, and I just said, yes. And I said, yes, out loud. And my friends were looking at me like, what are you talking about? Be quiet. Yes. I was in <laughs> <laughs> What? I was, I was in worship and they were looking at me like, what are you doing? But I just said yes out loud. And it was kind of loud. And everybody was looking at me like I was stupid. But <laughs> from that point on, I just started to I just started to trust God. I started to praise him. I started to really 
put them in my life more. And, I, and then I just started to see these things happening that I had no control over, like transferring schools, mm -hmm. having the opportunity mm -hmm. to be in Spartan Vision, be in Big Ten Student U, be, in, be at Impact, be in SSR, having all of those opportunities to do those things. I couldn't have placed myself in those by myself. Mm -hmm. Someone, somewhere, somebody had to just kind of lean me in that area. Yes. And I, you know, worked on some things, but God is at the helm of that. And that's who, he was the person that brought me into these circles so I can migrate and get better. Yes. Dude, I love, I love what you said. And I'm so glad that you're here with me, bro. That was incredible. Oh my gosh. I, you know what I was thinking about when you said that? I was thinking about the song Church Jumping by Caleb Gordon. Oh, yeah. Uh, he put me on a couple of weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, I've been yeah, listening yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And man, like, I'm trying to picture you because I hear you say that all the time. I hear you respond with yes, yes. And I just, I love the fact that that's, you know, part of your testimony is, is admitting that in that public space. That's, that's beautiful to me. You know, I think like you've touched on throughout what we've said here today, some of the things that you do of like Spartan Vision, Big Ten, SSR, like what are all of those, just for those out there who don't know, you know, what we're doing here, what are all those? And, and given that it is true, folks, that we are both in sports media and broadcasting and like production, mm -hmm. what, how did you get there? Why did you feel so called to do that? And what has that done for you? Because honestly, God put me in the space to like, migrate and become in that area so i gotta mm. i gotta jump back again i'm always going back to yeah, the past. yeah yeah but yeah. i'm jumping back to sophomore year fall semester okay uh i met a friend he went i went to the same school as him nick lundberg you mm. probably know oh him yeah, yeah 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 nicky j nicky j <laughs> <laughs> but it's so funny but nobody calls him that but um i met <laughs> i met nick and he's a wonderful person and i had i met him in high school i was friends with him we were always cool then I transferred to a different school in high school. So I stopped talking to him for like two years. But then I met him again in LA's class in 218. And we started talking. I met Miriam. She was a person in SSR. She graduated two years ago. Mm -hmm. But so I was talking with Nick and he was telling me, if you want to do sports media and you're a journalism major, come to SSR. I had, um, I had no clue what I was doing. I just kind of, after class, I just ended up in commerce. I was just there. And I was sitting there with Nick, talking to him about SSR, what do they do, what's happening, what do you do in it, how do you cover sports, blah, blah, blah. And then I go into the classroom with him. He's talking to everybody. He's doing all this like mingling and stuff. He knows everybody in the room. And I was sitting there like, LA says this all the time, when we come into SSR, we know everybody in the room. Yeah. She was like, these people were in your spots a year ago, two years ago, whenever. And I felt I was in the spot too. I was sitting in the corner, just looking around. I had to sign. And then I had to sign my name to be like enrolled in SSR. And it was like, I walk outside of SSR afterwards. I call my mom and I'm like, mom, I don't know what I just did. And I was like kind of scared. I was like, I just kind of put myself in the raw a little bit. I stepped out of my comfort zone. I did something that I originally want to do, but I don't know anything about it. I'm scared. I don't know what I'm doing. And she was like, just relax. There's a reason why you were here. There's a reason why you were put in that area and just see how you like it. Mm. Just keep working, keep going and just see if you like it or not. And two years, a year later, a year and a half later, I'm in four clubs for it. So oh it's just gosh. like, it's just kind of awesome to see that I'm here. And that's, it's just a blessing that I got put in that circle so early that yeah. I can actually work yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah. So yeah. being an SSR, that's where it all started for me. And I got to thank, I always thank Nick about this every time I see him. Mm. I see Nick, I thank him for bringing me to SSR because now I'm in multiple different avenues in sports media yeah, at Michigan State absolutely. and I got a that's a blessing because if I didn't get put in that area in that room in that classroom I wouldn't have been where I am now certainly certainly and I can reiterate that completely mm -hmm. I mean the community here at Michigan State is is really unlike anything couldn't else. be better no and uh, I yeah I second that but I want to touch on one thing because like for you and I as Christians, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's really, and I've talked about this before on the show, like performance and results versus the process of mm -hmm. how you get there and like what you learn. Those two things are, are widely ranging and those two different metrics of assessing kind of how you're doing 
are both unique and like there's time and place for both of them. Yeah. So I say that because SSR has won Emmys. Like there is large amount of success that has happened uh, within that environment. And so yeah. I was wondering is like, what has being in that environment and growing with those people done for you on a personal level, seeing how they get down, how they win their awards and how they attack each day in and day out. I have to just, I'm going to bring it back to a kind of controversial, not a controversial topic, but something that just happened. It was the anniversary of the shooting a couple of days sure, ago. On the sure, 13th. sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And I was just talking about this in my Journey 300 class with a couple of friends who were in SR Jackson, McIntyre, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Dez. Yeah, uh, Mac <laughs> Dez. Yep. So we were in class talking about this and um, we were all, the day of the shooting, we were all in SSR. Right. We were filming the show. Right. It's on Mondays at 8.30 at night. We were filming the show and Yusuf and Lexi were anchoring for the Valentine's Day show. Mm. And mm -hmm. it was, they one taked it and it was insane that they one take it because usually stuff happens, technical stuff happens. Sure. We never one take sure, it. Sure, sure, sure. So they one take the show. They ended the show. Uh, we were clapping for them at the end like we always do. And then um, LA is like running in and out of the room. We know, we don't know why we're all looking around like, why is she moving? She doesn't do this during the show. But like after the take ended, LA comes in and she's like, everybody go into this room. Now there's a shooting on Michigan state's campus. And everybody's like, what the heck is going on? I don't know what's going on. What's happening. And we all just kind of run into a room, hunkered down with each other. And for the next you know, four, five hours, we're just in the room listening to a police scanner scared for our lives. Sure. But yeah. what kept me comforted through that time, I prayed a lot during that time. That was probably number one. But number two was the people I, were with, I was mm. with. Yes. That day, that night, that time, I bonded with those people in that room on a, just a different level that I wouldn't have bonded with them if I was in that situation. Yeah. yeah. And it's not a good situation. It's really bad. But the way I came out of that situation, the next Monday that... It was a couple weeks. The next Monday we came back in the SSR. <laughs> the friends that I made, the conversations I had, they mm. were just so much lighter. It was like we were best of friends. Mm. So like something had to happen that was not good changed the dynamic of how we were as like a community. Yes. And that really just put the script yeah. for me as a person and for having the bonds with certain people. Yeah. So after that, I started hanging out with people like Joe Dez. I remember I was texting. He wasn't in the room. He was back at his dorm and um i was getting pretty close to joe at the time and we were just texting like hey are you good i was texting a million people that night sure, sure, making sure. sure everybody was okay but that was probably one of the more dynamic times that changed the dynamic of the friendships and relationships in the journalism community and they made us all really tight yeah so that was kind of a big switch for me when okay. it comes to the journalism world dude that's i miss you sorry sorry no you're okay you're okay i was just that kidding, man hey <laughs> That's such a good point to hit on, though, because oftentimes, and I'm not sure if you've heard this cliche, I know I know it's been a, a pattern in my life mm -hmm. over time, but people say that adversity introduces ours or us to ourselves. Yes. That's how it goes. Yes. And I feel like what you're talking about, which is completely true in a setting like that, where you're going through something alongside you know, whether it be a team on the field or whether mm -hmm. it be a classroom or a series of friends yeah. or a, whoever that group is and that integral mm -hmm. like role that you're filling, that adversity introduces us to everyone else. Yes. Right. Because it's a shared experience. And I feel like I felt that too yeah. in a different way in crew. Actually, I yes. felt that uh, recently because of the remembrance of that that we had. But it's mm -hmm. like, man, that shared history and being yes. able to sit here 367 days later mm -hmm. and be talking okay. about it and yeah. sharing it, you know, it's like, man, I learned so much more. I grew mm -hmm. and I explored who these people are. Yes. And I'm not sure if I ever would have done that. And so Absolutely. I just completely resonate with what you said. That's, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. It definitely changed. I talked about changing the dynamic earlier, yeah. but it just changed my life in a sense of the journalism bro. And with that exact same show, we won an Emmy a couple weeks ago. I think it was it was a couple months ago after, but we won an Emmy for that same show. And LA, in the submission for it, they told the story of the shooting. 
they told the story of that was the take that we did before the shooting yeah. and we never released it i don't think we might have i don't mm. really remember but okay we yeah. i don't think we released it i think not i think we did i think ellie uh, said we didn't release that show yeah but I, I, you're was, right there I, was not a good time for it we just kind of moved on agreed which is smart yep. but if we all need to move on but um yeah, yeah. that day we didn't release the show, but we did send it in front of Emmy and it won it, mm. which is pretty cool. And the way and the way she told the story was also pretty heart wrenching, but mm. it was definitely a she needed to do it. Yeah. There was a reason for it, yes. and we got rewarded for it. Yeah. And that was a, that was a pretty good day when we won the Emmy. She brought the trophy back to SSR. No we doubt. Took pictures with it. I did an Instagram post with it. <laughs> no doubt. It was so funny. No but doubt. I had them up my I had two of them up to my head like this. Oh. But okay. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta show you that after. But um, yeah, yeah. it was it was it was a good day and just holding those in my hand just means that i did something bigger i was a part of something bigger than just me mm. bigger than just msu bigger than just the journalism program i just did something i i was a part of something that actually won an award and that's just such a cool thing to say mm. and just a cool thing to just have in the back of my mind that i was just a part of something that was bigger than myself sure so sure certainly i worked for something that was not for me but was for can benefit other people and yes. help other people so I just, that's kind of, honestly, just kind of makes me smile a little bit. I can't really think about it. It has Any other to. way to say it is just it makes me smile. So. And it's about the community too, mm -hmm. right? It's oh, about It's about doing things alongside others for the betterment mm -hmm. of others. And that's why yes. I love that. I love hearing that. You know, let's shift though. Let's, okay. let's, let's go somewhere else. Because you mentioned that when you were in that room and you were enduring that trial mm -hmm. and like sorting through what was happening and trying yes. to process that you resorted to praying quite mm -hmm. a bit. So I was wondering if you would share with people, what are some of the things that you pray about often? Like what, what does your prayer life look like? And how do you, how do you get down with that? How I get down, <laughs> how I get down with that is a way to, it's a funny way to shift it, but how we get down with that. <laughs> that's so funny, but I usually, my prayer life is, it's sporadic. It's not um, in one spot, in one place. I could walk outside and go sit in my car and pray right now. Mm. It's, um, I actually do that a lot. Sometimes I just sit in my car and just kind of just look up yeah. and just start praying. I don't know. It's, it's super spontaneous for me is the word I'd say. It could be anywhere. I could be doing anything. Um, I remember my first call, I just sat there and I did it before I announced. Mm. And mm -hmm. that call went really well because not because of that definitely but the work that I put into it everything so sure 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 sure, sure. um my prayer life definitely is sporadic but it kind of how i describe it was it just happens in the right time at the perfect time mm. so i always i'm always praying at a perfect time a right time and then i see the dividends of it the prayer that it happens when i'm doing certain things sure so I, I always ask god just to help me in everything that i'm doing i just honestly i want to do this more I ask a lot of things for him. I ask a lot of things of him, like, hey, can I, can you help me with being a better broadcaster, being a better person, being a nicer person? Just a bunch of things that I'm always praying for, but I always, sometimes I try to do this more, just to sit down and thank him. Like, hmm. he's done so much in my life, it's just kind of mind boggling. I can't really put a hand on the things that he's done. He's done so much for me. And every day, God's working in my life in different places that I can't reach but he is reaching them for me. I don't have to do all those things. Yeah. He's moving his spirit in other rooms that I am currently not in right now. Yes. I am here with you, B-Rec, and yes. he's somewhere else moving in my, on my behalf mm -hmm. within different rooms and doing things for me that I can't even imagine. So I just have to thank him. And thanking him is what I've been trying to do more, and I think more people, Christians, should just thank God. Right. Because he's been doing... You may not be in the perfect time in your life right now. You may not be as happy as other people or in a spot that you want. You may want certain things. Like Valentine's Day just passed, and sometimes people are like, man, I want a girlfriend. I want a mm. relationship. Yes. But there's always times for that, and I would just thank God for it because I just saw this TikTok the other day on this guy, and he was like, he actually just cut his hair, which is kind of funny. Okay. But, um, yeah, uh, he's not talking about this right here. He's, no. <laughs> he's not no. you. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But he, I did that, as yep, you all know. Yep, yep, yep. Proceed. I had to drop that one out. My boy. But he, um, he was just describing it's Valentine's Day, and I know you guys might not have a girlfriend. You might not be where you want when it comes to, like, the relationship space. But just pray for her. Pray that she's going to be a great person in your life. Pray that she's 
chasing her dreams and doing what she wants to do, pray for that person because when she gets into your life, that's going to change. You're going to think back to when you were praying for that person and she's going to be all you ever wanted. So mm. you just have to pray for that thing that you want to do. Pray for that person that you want to come into your life. And then when it happens, you'll be looking back on that and be like, wow, God, God did it again. And that's just like he's, he's always doing it. And that's just kind of what you have to do. You have to just thank him. Thank you for the things that are in your life or not in your life yet because snap of a finger, blink of an eye, whatever you want to say, something could be in your life and you couldn't even imagine it. It's going to be so great that you can just, you're going to look and be like, wow, yeah, my life has changed for the better. And this person, this thing happened to me and now I'm just doing so much better. That's kind of how I felt with broadcasting. When I started doing it, I was like, this thing has changed my life a little bit and changed where I want to go. It's been just helping me become a better person. Mm. Absolutely. So, so you, I do what you just said there is awesome for so many reasons. And I think that that's something that I'm going to reflect on and think about as well, how I'm using that format and forum of prayer to give these things up, up to him in a more complete manner. But mm -hmm. you have grown onto the scene of big 10 broadcasting. And so I wanted to get into that. Mm -hmm. What have been some of your keys to the way that you've grown in the craft and what are some of your favorite memories so far i know there are many on the way oh yeah many on the way that we do not know and mm. we have not seen yet but talk to me about that like the growth of the craft and the memories that you've had calling games so far so i'm going to start when i wasn't calling games mm. and this wasn't even like a thought broadcasting was what i wanted to do but i didn't have like any experience with it i didn't know what i was doing I took Dan's play-by-play -play class. Dan Dickerson is the Tigers play-by-play -play guy. Shout out, Shout Mr. Out. Dickinson, Dickerson. Excuse me. Wow. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about Hunter Dickinson. But yeah, yeah I was thinking but no, seriously. Kansas Dan legend. Dickerson. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. For for being so hospitable and uh, you know, husband of LA. The gold. Yeah, we love we love both you guys. Seriously. Absolutely. For, for putting the time and effort and energy expenditure in to mm -hmm. help us all within the Michigan State School of Journalism. It's been incredible. So, Absolutely. quick shout out, but back to the yes. story. I actually want to add a little bit. Oh, I no was doubt. just on the phone with Dan a couple weeks ago. I think it was before, it was before the call with Jack and me okay. yeah, on yeah. Big Ten Plus. Yeah, yeah. And he actually listens to all of them. So I had a call with on Impact with Zach and him in LA were driving home one day and from Michigan State on Friday, and they were listening to the call, and I was just like, what? You listen to me? And I thought that was insane. I I was like, Dan Dickerson, he does what I want to do in right. this realm of sports. Right. Professionally, at the highest level. It's the Tigers. Right. The highest level you could possibly be at. And he listens. He sat down while walking his dog and listened to my call, and then called me like an hour later and said, this is what you need to do better, but this is what you are doing good now. Unreal. And I was like, whoa, whoa, wiggity, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. And it was, right. it was nuts. I was corny, but it was so nuts. And I couldn't believe that he actually said those things about me. He gave me tips to work on and help. And I've been working on those things slowly. I've been implementing them into my calls. Yeah. But bridging it back to Big Ten Network, mm -hmm. I didn't start doing broadcasting. I started doing camera work. I was trying to be like Ryan. Really, um, shout out Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Stock Daily is fantastic. Stock Daily. <laughs> yes, sir, Shout man. out, Ryan. He's yeah. such a good guy. And he taught me a lot what I know about cameras yeah, right now. No doubt. But I started doing cameras. I was always, I started with camera six. That was the first thing I did at a women's basketball game when I was shadowing. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to forget that. And then I just, I kind of kept working, kept doing camera work. I did cameras, TV like once. Never did replay. I want to do that yet. Ooh, um, yes. Never did graphics either. I want to do that too but I just kept doing camera work and I was happy with it. But then I started talking with LA for fall semester this year, talking about broadcasting. And then don't know how it happened, but I, we ended up getting, SSR gets one big 10 game for like every sport. So we got one for basket, women's basketball, it was a soccer game. And then we get um, women's basketball, soccer, and there's just one more I'm blanking on it right now. Well, hockey. We get three games oh, yeah, for right. different sports you're and right. SSR staffers can call games. Yeah. So that was my first game that I did. I got put in the room. Well, I was already in the room, but I got put in the space to yeah. start broadcasting. Yep. And the second that it ended, it went really well. Matt said I did a good job and that's all I needed to hear. And me and Deshaun stayed at the end of the 
like you know tear down a meeting and we all said break whatever and it was cool gotta talk about those those are so fun yeah, doing the little yeah, yeah. post meetings those are great but we um me and Nishan talked to Matt and we just said we I'd love to do this again I'd love to keep broadcasting as much as I possibly can and I sent him an email because Matt has a million things on his mind at all times. Shout out Matt McCullough, Shout by out the Matt way, McCullough. for He's... putting on for us and generating an unbelievable like teaching platform for us to learn about the craft and yeah. grow. And as you heard, he just rifled off all these different positions we can have within <laughs> a program and within the game whenever we host something on Big mm -hmm. Ten Plus live here at Michigan State. So just the facilitation of that program that Matt does fantastic. I should have told you guys who Matt was. No, 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 no. But um, no, should have let that. It's go. all I just good. Kept Matt, Matt but... is a live TV producer. Yes, he helps us contribute to every game that we do. That's live on Big Ten Plus. Absolutely, that's it. That's it. That's yeah. all you got to know. That's who Matt is, and just know he's the goat. That's but it. <laughs> he's amazing. Yeah. But I emailed him that night, and I said, "Hey, Matt, I'm just thankful for this opportunity to do a." game for Big Ten Plus, but I love to keep doing it. And I love to keep on working with you and keep working as a color analyst, as an announcer. And he did not respond to that email because um, he, he doesn't really respond a lot sometimes. It really, it really, it really depends. He's busy. He's a busy man. He's busy. I did that. He's a busy man. Yeah, yeah. But he, um, shout out, Matter, I love you. Don't yeah, mean anything yeah, about absolutely. that. No harm. No, no foul. No we foul. love you. But And what? And what? <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yes, sir. But he, um, the next, there was a women's game the next week, and I was in SSR just standing there watching people record the show. Yeah. And I get an email, it's a tech book. And I felt something in my heart. I was like, I have a feeling. I'm, I was kind of nervous. I was like, I might be announcing for this one. I didn't know. I just, it was like a shock in my head. It was a shock in my heart. I was like, I might be announcing for this one. And that was before the time where I like got good at prepping for games. Got it. Prepping was like, a lost thought. I never knew how to do it. I was just kind of like rambling around trying to prep as much as I can. I didn't know how to do it. So I just, when when I got that tech book, I was like, ooh, I might have to do a lot of this prep. I was thinking about how hard prepping was going to be, but I was thinking about, I was kind of nervous about doing another call, but I checked it and it was me and Jack Steger on a call for, I was doing color news and play by play. And I was like, whoa. And I think I was going to get one this fast. We had that conversation in that yeah. text and email yep. a week before yep. I got put on the next game. I don't, that's crazy. And um, uh, Matt was saying how there weren't a lot of announcers around for this year for women's basketball, for, for basketball sure. or any sport. There are not announcers in our crew. And he just put me on that game. I did well, Matt said. Mm -hmm. And he put me on every other women's game for color this entire season. Boom. Boom. That was like five straight games. There it is. And mm -hmm. that was nuts. I didn't think I was going to be doing every single one. But I was I did the mod, I did one with you, yeah. did one with Jack again. Loved it. I did one with Zach. The mission game, that was huge. Yes. That was the biggest game I ever called. Yep. But that was a huge game. But I just kept doing women's games and Matt keeps trusting me with these opportunities. Yeah. And I'm just blessed to say that I actually got them. But this kind of comes back to me as a person. I just put my foot forward and I put myself out there. Something I usually don't do a lot. I put myself out there. I was scared. I don't know. I just did it scared. And I emailed Matt and I said, hey, I want to do this again. And I reaped the benefit of it. Mm. So mm. I think putting yourself out there and just putting that foot forward can help you bounce. Because mm. what if they don't say, if they say no, okay, if it doesn't happen, okay, you can just keep working, keep yeah. moving on. But definitely just try to put yourself forward in life because that has gotten me to so many different places that I didn't imagine I was going to get to without putting that one, send that text, send mm -hmm. that email, that's that's a, depending on what you're doing thing but like send those things out put your foot forward and you never know how god could bust you on the other side dude absolutely you couldn't have said that better i feel like you know one of the phrases that i was thinking about i was driving back from my internship today <laughs> and i thought to myself you know people think of the term dnr right as do not resuscitate mm -hmm. when somebody's having a medical emergency that's kind of how it's used yeah it's a negative connotation mm -hmm. it's, it's when somebody is struggling Yes. I thought of DNR and I was like, DNR isn't about like what is what is changing negatively. Mm -hmm. It's do not refrain. Mm. Do not refrain from asking about uh, opportunity. Do yes. not refrain from communicating with somebody about what you want. 
do not refrain from making that extra effort to drive to that venue, to do that game, to, mm-hmm. to be doing a, a you know, online call when the team is on the road. Do mm-hmm. not refrain from taking that next level, that next step. And I think that summarizes that very well. I love what you were saying there. Absolutely. And just about the impact side, it was crazy how I'd even got into it. I've been in impact for about a year and a half, but I haven't covered a game for them mm-hmm. until like a month ago, two months ago. Mm. Um, so I started doing that. I've been, I just, I go to every meeting since before I know everybody in the room. So yeah. that's kind of why I would go to those meetings. I didn't do anything for them besides podcasts. I didn't cover anything for them. And I wanted to start getting into that realm, but I do a lot for SSR yeah. as much as I yeah, possibly yeah, yeah. can. The U inches is a lot, by the way. Which is, you, you have output. Don't worry about that. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. try. Mm-hmm. You do too. You, I, you're going to get there, man. But hey, trust me, you, you, you'll be covering quick. LA, you're already a producer, dude. You're going to be there 100%. My man. But, My man. So back to that. But we're just covering games for Impact. I didn't do it a lot. And then Zach texts me over break. Mm. Mm-hmm. And he says, hey, there's an opening to do to write for a game. Do you want to do it? I said, absolutely said yes. Yeah. And actually, I was covering it for SSR. And I kind of like switched who I was covering it for. And that probably wasn't the best thing to do. But I wanted to cover for Impact because I wanted to get in that room and in that space mm-hmm. and let like Zach know that I can do these things. Mm-hmm. And I did that, wrote a pretty good game story. Okay. And a week later, he asked me, to, do I want to do color for a game? Mm-hmm. And that was huge. First men's basketball call. It went really well. It was such a good call. Me and Zach were building this chemistry that was cool on air. Yes. And it was really, really fun. Yes. And just... Again, back to putting yourself out there, getting yourself into those spaces and getting into that room. That's mm-hmm. what I did. Yeah. And from now on, I've been doing a couple. I did two calls with Zach, and I'm going on the 10th of March to Indiana to travel. Oh my! With Zach for let's go. A call. So that's going to be really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't wait to do that. I, I haven't traveled for any sports before, like out of the state. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be insane. It's going to be huge. That's so I'm, in, I'm gonna start prepping for that mm. very soon. Yeah. Like you know, tonight, honestly. Okay. But um, I'm yeah, gonna. Yeah, yeah get that prep going and do that stuff but and now i've been texting zach like all the time if there's an opening text me Hmm. and if there's an opening to cover something i don't care what it is just text me because i want to do it and he's been letting me know opportunities he's been texting me every week there's an opening for writing or for broadcasting whatever the case is yeah that's how i got to do the remote call great um just when there's opportunities out there i want to grab them because there's like something in my heart now it's like if somebody else is covering a sport I want to be at that sport. Mm. So I'm like going to put my foot forward yeah. and say, hey, whoever it is that can give me a credential, I want to go cover the sport. Yeah. It's kind of how with the game on Sunday for women's basketball against Michigan, um, I just was testing LA and said, hey, is there a way we can get credentials to go cover this game? I saw somebody doing it last week. I'm not going to name the person, but I was like, you know what? I don't want to do that. Yeah. I should be there. I want to do this. So I don't want to sit down. And my, my heart's kind of like, running now and it's getting urgent like if i'm not covering anything i'm like what was going on like i want to cover again i want to cover as many sports as i possibly can and get just get better mm. so i had that conversation and now we're probably going to go travel to michigan wow but wow that's like those those things those like those texts putting yourself out there putting a foot forward to mm. do it taking a little initiative that can get you so far. Yeah. Ask and you shall receive. Ask right? and you shall receive. Knock yes. and the door will be <laughs> open to you. Matthew Absolutely. 7, 7. Right there on the wrist, baby. We Let's love go. It. Matthew I need one, I need 7, one of those. 7. I got to get one of those. But uh, no, no, no. Here's the deal. Is mm-hmm. like you talked and you have talked extensively about your preparation and how you go about getting ready. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite experiences between you and I this year <laughs> was when we prepped alongside Ooh. the assistant, the director of recruiting for Michigan Shout State out. Women's oh. Hoop, Joel Weimer. So I want to ask you, what was your takeaway from that and or takeaways if you want to add more? And There's what, so many. Well, for <laughs> sure, for sure. But but what was your impression of, mm-hmm. of how, you know, things are going inside mm-hmm. that program? And, and what was it like for you to have built that connection and be able to communicate with somebody who's in a position of power that mm-hmm. can help us? A Absolutely. Bit? Yeah. So um, the women's team, I'm going to start there. Okay. They're fantastic. Yeah. They've done so many big things. They played so many huge games against top teams. The big team is probably the hardest 
like conference, I think. It's I would say basketball. it is. I think sure. it is. 100%. Undoubtedly, like, yeah. You know, yeah. SEC yeah. might come yell at me or everybody else. Yeah. Like, eh, yeah, 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 but I think it's the hardest. We I have Ohio State. We have Iowa. Blah, yep. blah, blah. Yep. But yep. I think yep. it's the hardest. And we, they played some really heartfelt games and tough games yeah, you're right. against a bunch of Big Ten opponents that are ranked. Yeah. And we've almost won a couple. Those have been some nail biters. I was watching another one. It was Ohio State. Yes. That was a really close. Ohio a State's ago, tough. That, yeah. Was, yeah. that was a tough game to watch. But yeah. They've been so close that we've been so close to like getting over the hump of beating mm. those really tough teams. I don't think we could do it yeah. before the tournament, but just um, meeting Joel, that was the first time I ever talked to a coach in person. Okay. Um, it was kind of around Kara, which I thought was pretty funny. Yeah, but you Kara know. is this SID for Michigan State. This can all get out there. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. But listen, Kara, I think I made amends with you. I hope. And, you know, with that being said, we got to do what we got to do. We had to get to Joel, so we did it. So, anyway. Anyway. <laughs> what? Dude, who, no, who cares? Okay. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I'm just, seriously, we're just letting it run. We're, yeah, it, got you, got you. Okay. Hey, they can't hurt us if it happened True. a month ago. So True, we're, yeah. We're all good. We're all yeah. good. We're all good. I don't know why we're I brought that up. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking to Joel at yeah. the coffee shop, whatever, and it was – interesting because i was so nervous at first i've never talked to a coach i, I wrote down a list of questions and i come in i sit next to brian and he's the most relaxed i've ever seen him in my life and i'm just like whoa bro how are you so relaxed and he was just like spitting off questions to joel and he was like he asked like five in a row and i asked one i think i, I asked like, 37 questions on that. it was, dude, like it was so many and i only got in like eight yeah, but, it, I mean, it was tough. It was tough. It was fun though, because like you were you wanted to take the opportunity to do it, and that was a big thing. And you let me come, so I appreciate that. But it's my brother right here. But so I asked one question, and it was the most like color analyst question I've ever asked in my life. It was about um how much this team defensively is like how they full court press. How does that affect the team? How does that affect the pressure on other teams when you play them? Yes. How do the transition points get like? How do the transition points help them win games like that? And he really smiled. And that's when he started opening up to me. Yes. Because he saw that, I guess, I watched the team. Mm -hmm. I paid attention to the and team. And you care. And I also, care, yeah. yeah. So that was a big thing because he really wasn't looking at me. He really wasn't, like, acknowledging me. Not really a lot until I asked that question. Yeah. And then when he, when he asked that question, he just, like, smiled. He opened up and started having actual genuine conversations with me and looked me right in the eye. And I was like, I got it. There that was nice because I've never talked to a player. Players, coaches at Michigan State or anywhere, mm. they don't open up a lot to reporters. Sure. They um they keep to themselves. They don't like – sometimes they're not as nice, you know. Yeah. People yeah. like Tyson yeah. Walker. You, you ever try to – Yeah. I mean, the thing like – Joe's nice is so nice. Though. It's not on him. No, no, no. No. You're right. In some cases, for sure. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's why our business is as hard as it is because yeah. you can never really tell. Absolutely. What what is happening in the backstory? Like mm -hmm. what where they've been? Yeah. Like who who they are internally? Absolutely. You can't judge somebody's heart by looking at their face, right? Yes. And so I I just think like oh, well. it depends on where you catch them. Absolutely. And like, like what kind of mood they're in, right? Absolutely. So, it just so, everything changes because we have moods. And it, we have different you're right. times. And We're all human. Absolutely. It's just so hard. you might talk to me and I'm mad one day, right? And you just don't know absolutely. why. But I'm not taking it out on you. I try not to do that to anyone, but yeah. I might be mad as can be, and I don't know, something might be going on. It's just kind of how where your heart's at, where your head's at at certain times. Yeah. But having that conversation with Joel was so amazing. That was it, – it just kind of turned out to, like, three people having fun at a coffee shop. It was good. And it was great. It was really just good. talking about hoops, and that's yeah. what I like to do anyway, so no it was kind of just having a good time. And that's kind of how you got to see these things when it comes to being a media person. These people are people first. Yes. Yes, they're players. Yes, they have a national media coverage over them at all times, but they're people first. Um, asking questions to Freilich, asking questions to Jay Nakins. Right. Like, I remember I was with AJ Evans. Shout out AJ. He's great. Yeah. Shout um, out AJ. Shout out AJ. Yeah. But um, he asked a question to Jay Nakins about he's just his shooting form. And Akins was like, he was like, asking all these statistical questions, all mm. these questions about how he has been playing good or not playing good, whatever the case may be. And AJ asked him just a simple question about uh, Tom Izzo was talking about how you just tighten up your shooting form. How has that helped you shoot the ball? And Aiken smiled. So 
like they like those personable questions like that. Yeah. That just kind of can tell that you're looking and can tell that you can see what's going on. And it's yes. just more than numbers. It's more than just all that stuff. It's just more about personality. Yeah. So those things can really help when you're interviewing somebody like that For or sure. asking any questions to a random person on the street. That really helps when it comes to getting personable with someone is if, if you're actually looking and you know what you're talking about mm -hmm. and you're paying attention. Mm -hmm. So those are all the things that helped me in the interview with Joel yeah. was just paying attention to the team, mm -hmm. actually looking, actually watching. And what surprised me, I talked to you about this a couple of weeks ago, was when he said he knew the games that we called. And yeah. Played, oh, my gosh. Which I thought was wild. Yeah. So I was like. Tell, was like, tell the story. Tell, tell what he I said. I will. So he, they um, have to hear that. That was so crazy. We were sitting. <laughs> we were in the coffee shop having a good time talking. And I brought up something about, like, I covered the first game of the season. And I saw that how the full court press and the trap and how you your identity changed through the season as it came along. And can you talk a little bit about that was kind of the question, just to summarize it up. And then he was like, yeah, I, he answered the question. And he said, yeah, I remember you were at the Oakland game and you were at the Evansville game. And I was like, what? So they, they watch yeah. who's broadcasting their games, who's writing for their games. I think he actually brought up a game that I actually wrote for. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah, you yeah. were on the call for Evansville. Yes. I wrote for that yes. game. So he yeah. brought up a game that like I didn't even call. Yeah. So I wrote an article about and which was like, whoa. What is that? But um, it's insane how like that can actually happen and – it just kind of made me think that I was like, whoa, they're, they're watching everything. Dude. Right. They're watching right. who's broadcasting their games. They know this stuff. Every last move. Every single last piece of media that's going to come out about them, if it's student or not, mm -hmm. they're watching. They it. know. And they know. So yeah. when he said that, I was like, what's going on? How does he know this? And I just kind of made me smile a little bit that he's watching what we do. And I guarantee you, he probably looked at our call. Probably. So. Probably. Yeah. Because we, we did the hype it up a little bit and we... We, honestly, we prepped a lot for that game. Yeah, and I, I had to say that after the um after the post game meeting, I was like, yeah, Siberia, because we prepped a ton for the prepped a ton for this game. We did a lot to make this a good broadcast. So, yeah. what, I had to say that. Let yeah. me ask you this, because I know I know we're coming up on time here, so mm -hmm. I want to ask you a couple more things. Okay, I want to kind of get through them a little bit quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. rapid fine, fire fine. type stuff. Absolutely. What would you say has been the most who are some of the most influential people that you've dealt with that yeah. have changed the trajectory of, of yeah. your life you know and and the way that you go about your business yep so i'm gonna start this i've been talking about family all night i'm gonna yeah. not start yeah. with family okay i'm gonna talk about la a little bit mm -hmm. she um i just i kind of call like my mom away from my mom yeah. she's like the mom of a michigan state yeah she cares she talks about she just helps us go through our business. She talks about what we can do. She helps us get opportunities. And she's kind of the reason why I got in the spaces that I'm in now. So she's a very influential person in my life. No doubt. I can say now. I can text her whenever. She'll answer immediately. I can just reach out to her whenever and just kind of talk to her about life, talk to her about sports. Yeah. Just not even about covering anything, just like life things. Right. And she'll be there to break it down, talk to me. We talked about... um. The shooting again, I, I, mm. I don't like to do that, but we talked about the shooting and it was just a good way for me to like kind of figure out where my mind was at. After for that. sure. So yeah. that was really yeah. cool that she did that. But we having these conversations with people like that really helped me in my life to become a better journalist, a better person. So shout out LA for that. We, we love you. Yeah. And then I'd probably say my mom and my dad and my okay. sister. Yeah. My sister is a different one. Um, she... You know, brothers, sisters fighting all the time, blah, yeah. blah, blah. We're always yeah. like this. But what? Sure. two years ago, I really kind of realized that she was like a road dog. Like, she's like my best friend. Mm. She's like my person I can always go to for anything. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, sometimes you can tell your parents a lot. Sometimes you can't tell them everything or whatever the case may be with that. I try to tell my parents everything. That's not really me. But me and my sister have separate conversations that kind of stay within us. Mm -hmm. I mean... When it comes to like depression, when it comes to like different things like that, I've had certain conversations about those things I'm not gonna get into. Sure. sure with sure. my sister first, and then it's kind of led over to my parents and stuff like that. But those things kind of, my sister has kind of helped me stay solid, stay grounded, and stay kind of faith up. Mm. So I kind of have to yeah. like thank her for that as well. And it's just, it's just a family. Is the last thing I'd say is the mm. people who've been like just detrimental in my life and instrumental in my life is my family. So yeah, those are yeah. the people that have influenced me, and they're why I work hard. Mm. They're why I work mm -hmm. as hard as I possibly can. And 
One more shout out. I know this is yeah, one. Yeah, one more yeah, shout no, out is my grandparents. Good. Oh, good, good, they, good. Yeah. They just have so much wisdom and so much wisdom in Christ, so much wisdom in life. And they're like who I want to be when I get older as a person, mm. as a spiritual person. They're just kind of who I want to model it after because they've done so much in my life and they poured into my life so much. I just want to kind of model my life after them a little bit because they've shown me the way. And they're kind of, and I see it in my parents, then I, they see it in me too. So it's like a nice circle, triangle, whatever you want to call it, of just love. Mm. And that's what, that is why I do what I do because that whole triangle of love, those people, everybody in my family and friends is the reason why I'm here today and why I work hard because I want to support them. Okay. And I just like picking up the phone and calling my grandmother is just probably one of the best things I do on certain days. Mm. I don't do it enough. I need to do it enough. Talk to my grandparents. Every time I come home, they're like, go see your grandparents. My parents are always like that. But yeah. they just, I want to do that because they poured so much into me. So I need to pour back. Mm. But they, their life and how they've lived and they were living in a different time, doing different things. But what one thing that's all in common with every one of my grandparents, they stayed in Christ, stayed in faith. They did it in different ways, different places. Mm -hmm. My grandmother on my dad's side, she moved from Alabama to Michigan and she had to just pack everything up and leave. And some some things like that she said just took faith and she couldn't just do it mm. she had to like she kind of had to like rile up her emotions moving from the state yeah. at that time for yeah. a reason like being in alabama and it was a different things going on racially sure, stuff like sure, that sure, so she sure. had to just up and leave and that was hard for her because she had to leave everybody that she knew family friends all that stuff and she just had to come here and then she had to make a life for herself yeah and i didn't have to do that when it comes to like just being growing up in a more of a different financial space or whatever, but having that foundation and knowing that she worked as hard as she possibly can to make a life for herself and become successful, that's what I want to do. So that's why I always think about that, her story, and that helps me to keep working. So. My man, my man. <laughs> I think you just put a really good seal on the conversation for today. I, I really <laughs> do. I think that that was a nice way to kind of wrap things up. So. What I will say is thank you for coming along Absolutely. here with me. Thank you for being a part of my everyday. And Absolutely. I'm excited to see where we go over the next year Absolutely. plus. It's going to be amazing. But before we get out of here, I want people to know, if you want to share, how can people connect with you? How can they stay seeing you know, social media and like everything that you're doing Absolutely. and all the content you put out? I would follow myself on Instagram and it's Derek Dot Mitchell one. I don't, I don't like doing shameless plugs, but that's probably a way I would try to keep up with everything that I'm doing. I post my work on there a lot mm -hmm. when I'm doing broadcasts, when I'm writing things, when I'm like SSR every week. I always post for them. Yeah. But I that's kind of how you can keep up with me and the work that I'm doing. And definitely, I like to be on like talk to Burek a little bit about hopping on the show again when we do yeah. a couple more calls. Yeah. Life gets longer. Things happen. For sure. I can just you know speak to you guys and speak to brian again about different things that are going on in life no doubt if that's okay with him but yeah, oh yes it is. yes it is <laughs> well definitely that's probably where i'd keep up with me okay and you'll see me with beerick a bunch on his instagram yeah. and all his social media and yeah. platforms as well so yeah. just kind of keep up with beerick you'll be able to keep up with me because we're never losing this no. this little orange juice thing right here we got going on we're never losing this no it's here so it's, it's here so we're yeah. that's why i would keep up with me but just I want to sit here and I want to thank Beer for letting me be on the show. Oh, I've man. been talking about this for like a year. Yeah. I wanted to get on the show yeah, for a minute. For real. And uh, he finally got me a slot in, ah! saved me a spot. You know, he's he's talking to all these athletes and, you know, big people, and I'm just me. So Dude, I'm glad that he actually you, got little on me you're on the big, show. Don't you worry. Don't so you I really worry. appreciate don't that. But worry. thank thankful to you. I'm thankful to you guys and I'm thankful to Beerick as well. My man. So my man. thanks, my brother. Hey, absolutely. And thank you guys. Absolutely. And folks, that's everything for us on Confluence World Podcast with Brian Rector. And we blitzed through season one in the opening semester of this year. We're doing it again in season two. It looks a little bit different. Content on social media, on Instagram is different. Our connection is different. We're gonna be posting an ad read that you'll see here in, in a little bit. Oh. And uh, we're also able to connect with more than just the athlete now. These people are more than athletes which is exactly why we wanted to expand that. But for now, from myself, from Derek Mitchell, have a great night, everybody, and, or day, wherever you may be, whenever you're watching what we're doing here. And uh, keep tuned 
on Confluence World on YouTube and Instagram. Amen. Oh,